the gate of here, find him more oi for you. But can fall fall with our father for laughing. Okay, he's thinking mine, and now now was our offer by Otoa of a full fool. Yeah, so don't be tough and not black. Yeah, it's a real, it's a real day and night for no amore. But if it's time, it's a real day and night. I don't have a man at all. But I don't have a lot of love. And I have a dog with four to one. The harm I have a lot of love, 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 and two. That is the only thing I have to do. Get out of here. The man who has a lot of love is a lot of love. A lot of love, a lot of love. Or who can fuck off for a lot of love.
popular TV series as a stunt actor. Also worked in numerous big budget movies filmed in New Zealand as a stuntman. And a few years back, he played a Tongan father on the popular web series Baby Mama's Club that went viral as Luciane Buchanan and the Tongan actress father. Also, he has worked on numerous short films here in New Zealand and abroad. He was not only popular on screen, but also in theatre. He acted in Albert Martini's play, Hearts of Men, season, that's the second season. He recently finished filming the Tongan story, Brutal Lives, a new web series by Sandra Kailahi and Bella Manu Sauti. That will be released in June coming. This week, he was one of the actors on Burning Opinion, the play about the riot in Tonga in 2002, written by upcoming Tongan writer Suli Moore, which will be played at the Auckland Town Hall. Oh, Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, our, our third judge for tonight is our one and only Mrs. Makalita Kolo. Pastor Simai. Makarita Kolo is one of our Tongan prominent figures here in New Zealand. She has done a lot of work to help our Tongan people here in Auckland. She has led a few community projects for the benefit of our people in our country. She wears a lot of different hats, and we are all very fortunate to have her representing us Tongans in leadership roles. One of her main roles in, is being a local board member in the Mangere Otahuhu local board. Pastor Simai. <laughs> She's very humble and possesses a big, of, a big tongue and heart to help individuals, groups, churches, and our Tongan communities wherever she can. We will give you a rundown of our program log for tonight. After this, we'll um, kindly ask the band to play us another song. And after that, there will be our first judging event, which is a Tongan um, love song singing competition by our lovely contestants who are sitting to the right uh, hand side. And shortly, uh, do you think we should introduce them, Jenny? Of course. Who's not our crime? They don't come here for nothing. Well done. So, by Osibe, I rank you for our heap of our heap of our tongue. I am going to go to the house of 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 the house the house of 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 the Test of the senses. I have on our mata and our far, far to all of them on our case and I have a good fight. And I give him a full give away and I details now pouring the motor and to go back and move it. I might be a little bit of 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 a little bit
filo aquí a tu etal fofoa matar a pura coia de hoco coita aquí a coita o feo que coia tá coja nem coi lá o país me fica o coi fama lava se existe se ni they've come close and they've become friends in a journey with the this lost the autonomy the one man the autonomy mo pas pasi mai mister no pas si tu bloco Mr. Novesi Tuipulotu hails from Fondo Moemoa, Fuecafa, Fangakofe Feholoto, Vaikopuna, Vaomapa, and he is one passionate Tongan youth leader who helps in bringing youth together in our community. Mopaspasi mai, Mr. Novesi Tuipulotu. Next contestant is Ms. Halame Elizabeth Malupo. Yes, and Likua Lofa Beach Resort sits on the west coast of Tomakapu, fringed with palm trees, surrounded by a lush tropical garden and white sandy beaches, overlooking the lagoon and the Pacific Ocean. Alright, so if you're wanting to go there for a holiday, you know where to go and check into, eh? That's Likua uh, Lofa Beach Resort. Give her a big clap, please. <laughs> Thank you. And um, she is a law student at University of Auckland, studying for a Bachelor of Law, and she's excited to be Miss Likua Lofa Beach Resort in search of Miss Lose or Doma 2020. Our next contestant, ladies and gentlemen, must be my Miss Claudine Siali. <laughs> Miss Claudine Siali representing Eight Roses Dine and Cafe. Claudine Siali is a 23-year-old Australian girl that moved to New Zealand two years ago. Her father is from Talafo'o, and her mother is from Lithuania. She works on the ceiling patches and is a qualified marine engineer and has been in the marine industry for many years. She's proud to represent A Roses Cafe and, and Buffet, a thriving Tom and Og and operated business. Growing up in rural Australia, she did not have access to the rich, beautiful Tom and culture that we can only enjoy in New Zealand. No paspasi mai, is for Nisiale and Roses Miss Lolo Halai Valu Tava Klappe Ame Heistini Miss Loise Henrietta from Malewasi My loving father hails from Makakofele Unga Fu Hei Lala Kofuspala Ahi Kofietui Hei Lala Fisi Niu Oloto Haangana Hei Lala Kopulu Kaki Niu Ataufare Maile Ate Volo Te Ako Enifine Eki Mihi Utu Loa Ha Siale Hai Vala Siale Flato Ubikoi Hei Lala Loa Oloto Poha Mas Pasi Mai Kaya malo ay matapito ita nata, oloto ko ha, fanga ko kunali, fanga ko lolo kaho, fanga tafitao, nuko tapu, dea mo e fanga lolo milo, ko e kao nanga hoi hoi fua ia, o kune fafo fonga e kalapu ka batonga ko ia, ay lolo halay malu, oi ba henga Hastings, ko loise Henrietta po malo. Ladies and gentlemen, the next contestant is Ms. Jasmine Prescott Whittle. She is, a, she is a Tongan beautiful young maiden from Sia Koveyongo, Kolomotua, and England, Great Britain. She's 21 years old, works as a sound and lighting technician, loves to dance and to help youths reach their full potential by doing what they love to do. Her father is from England and her mother is from the Prescott family from Kolomotua. And she's super excited and very proud to be Miss Dagosa Elegance. Last but not the least, please, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together and welcome the one and only 
Mr. Oluaki Maka Fulivai Kaiwilaki. His parents are Wilson Walaba Kaibelata and Taufa Homo Faleono Fulibai Kaibelata from Funga Matatoa Fola Osi, New Tutolu, Apiko Tua Talatau, Siapu Elimo de Amoetutu Amakaba. He is 15 years of age, a student of Onehanga High School, and he is proud to represent Salome Kavaliku's work known as Sal's Creation. Basta si mai! Ladies and gentlemen, here are our six contestants for tonight. Katoa Puno. Tafoki. Hold your best for see my own now. Go in. I'll be in the back. I hope what do I suddenly have to hear? Now, for the guy, I come at the hangout. This is how I feel. Who me to a loss of Tonga? The Amoe Mana, the Tonga, the Hotel Boma. I get out to a Sanga Loroa. Thank you. 
Miss Livy Walofa Beach Resort, do you have Miss Halamehi, uh, Elizabeth Malopo? Who's our next person coming up there? Now, I've got glasses, you don't. <laughs> our next one is Miss Eight Roses, Miss Claudine Siale. Because he might go on his yellow, and soon as I did, I did a whole lot of the lady to hear if you are feeling. I never more may I inform you for our kid, a poly art to a manacoa, a head of fan out, a hiva for a toma, a cocoa porcalama, when you have a eye in our door, can now do a manacoa, get out here for a toma. Hey, God, it can't 
Yes, please put your hands again together for Maureen Ziyad. Look at that. Lithuanian mother came here two years ago. Why? Because she's hungry. She wants to be a real Tongan. And um, yes, and she grew up in rural Australia. She did not have access to the rich, beautiful Tongan culture that we all enjoy here in Aotearoa. And thank you, Claudine, for coming to Aotearoa to learn about your, your heritage. So, lovely. Thank you, Madame. I'm hoping to see my girl Nana Hoko. We miss Lolo Haragalo, Kaba Clap and the Destiny. Miss Loise Henrietta. Komale was.
Kwege Mugainga, Mr. South Korea Shibuya 2020, Mr. Wakimaka Fulibai Kaidelata. Twini, how do you feel? I didn't feel, I feel like wearing the costume. That's what I want. I want to take the costume. I thought you were going to say that you, you remember the, the time when my cousin came and asked your hands in marriage. Uh, she's married to a Tongan, uh, of a Kiloma Taimani. So that's how beautiful our Tongan people. You know what? I was, I was reminiscing. I, 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 was, I was going down memory lane. In the day? Back in the day, up in the Guama tree. Go ya yo wey ki mo kai na. Mo pas pasi mai ka ofa mao, pero mo en ao en masa ko bitu ki o es ya fini. Mo en la ba ya en ta ta kai ulo aki. Fa ma na tu a tu a ipe a peito ke tu mo en lao a e. Meleni, ke ke isite, lo i hosi, lu, mei. Mo ga hi, me a ta bo ni ke. Can I just say, that young fella will go a long way. Because he's so talented that um, he's only 15. Imagine in another how many more years, eh? He'll be standing in front of us, showing us the ropes. And I think that's the very purpose, one of the main objectives of, of this program, that we seek for the beauty from within. Um, in this day and age, people went post for and go looking for the outer beauty, uh, you know, tahine, talabo, hine, hina. But uh, it's more important to look for tamasi and ta'ahine that the beauty stems from inside. What do you think? You know, we have a, a parable in the Pukanans and they say if you have a, um, if you don't have a language, then you won't have a history. If you don't have a history, then you don't, you have no soul. And that, that young fella and all of them showed us tonight that they do have a history that they are Tongans, bless them. Oh, for awesome. Tau, tau hoko atai dewa ke tau polka lama hono wa i hahiri ae, fa me ite ae kau ta me a koi a ka seme to a spend, taki fo kia ye tau kau nanga fo kamao e fia fini me le nao lino ka pehe kia lino pongi, ya mo kinao tore kau tangata koi ni, kwe kau tangata kwa ni e kau ta me a ke kake mao ka nao hoa, nao kei singolo mo kinao tolo, oi ae ko mo to kau fe mao a mo hoa, the first round topic, Tongan youths should be, shouldn't be going out on dates with their boyfriends or girlfriends. They should do faitava in RR like the olden days. Rati Tavenga Tauti Baby or if you have fini of the hair mine, go to Tukutonga, or we try to go out in the Mohonao, Kaumea, or Ferenite, Tahine, or Fima Uya, and now to a Fafoki by a fine car, the Moy Aa. I got Tavenga Uakia and find on the Tauti Baby, the Okufai group for Kaikai, provide the Mot group for Kaio at the home of Matakia of Fano.
Nervous, that's all right. I think we all feel the same. Do we feel the same, guys? Yep, okay, yeah. So, to my understanding, we have two groups, group A and group B. Which side is group A? This side. Lois here, and we have a leader. We have a team leader. Halamahi, lovely. And this must be group B. Cool. All right, so, um, since it's the month of love, even though Valentine's uh, finished, how was your guys' month of um, sharing love with your loved ones or your partner? Very, very romantic. Ooh. Any details? No, thank you. <laughs> okay, private life. Do you want to ask the mic down? Sure. How was your Valentine's or Love Month? Um, God be more Cecil, that's all. Lovely. How was yours, baby? Um, the same as Lucy. <laughs> Just Jesus, yeah. Okay, love it, love it. Um, well, mine, um, yeah, mine was the same. Just Jesus, Casey, God of Air. Um, but yeah, while we're still waiting, I'll just read out your guys' topics just so you can prepare your thoughts. I'll give you time um, to discuss with your teams. So the first topic again is telling you shouldn't be going out on dates with their boyfriends or girlfriends. Um, they should stick to fight cover and ah ah like the older day. If, if no one here knows what ah ah is, I just recently learned that that's when a guy comes to your house, he knocks on the door, and he has gifts with all his friends. Am I right? Am I wrong? I don't know. That's what I think it is. And they come in and they sit in your local fale and then they just talk with you and your parents are present. So no alone time, more like a whaka family, family time with your future potential spouse. Oh, lucky. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Um, we were just talking about Valentine's. How was your Valentine's? No, um, no mentions. <laughs> no mentions. My mom and dad's here, so. Okay. It's alright. You can tell us to our first debate topic. Like I said, Tongan youths shouldn't be going out on dates with their boyfriends and girlfriends. They should stick to the traditional fight cover or the ah ah. We'll start with group B um, and your thoughts. Uh, my team is against this idea. Whilst I do understand the traditions and the morals um, and rules within the Tongan community especially. Um, I believe that we as a generation were raised by you, our mothers and our fathers. I believe that the trust should be strong enough that you instilled in us what is right and what is wrong. And I therefore, I believe that because you instilled that in us and because you taught us right from wrong, go to church, that you should be able to trust that we can make those decisions ourselves. And it's through your parenting skills, it, sh it shines through in, in the decisions that we make, whether that be in relationships or life in general. But I think that there should be trust in your own parenting in us, that, that those morals and those guidelines should stay through with us. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, my team and I strongly agree with the fact that you shouldn't be going out on dates. I'll be talking from biblical and moral aspects supported by social and statistical evidence that have been extracted from the experiences of our Tongan youth. In the old days, as, was, as well as to the same, the Bible explicitly instructs parents to look after their children, children whom are to be defined to be, be from the age of birth till marriage. According to Tongan culture, 
children are considered children as long as they remain unmarried, for which they are then considered a minor. Linking, linking back to the Bible, the commandment instructs parents to look after their children, and can, that can only be for fully that can only be fully implemented when the boys and girls date in the presence of their parents. I would also like to rebut speaker number one, as I believe that although there is trust within the relationship between a child and a parent, there is also a sense of respect, obligation, and responsibility when the parents meet with the boyfriend or the girlfriend. So touching back on that subject, um, I feel like it gives the opportunity for the individual to find the right partner for them, as the relationship between a parent and a child is very different to a friendship between someone you meet at school, to someone that you have at work, to your cousins, aunties, uncles, and etc. So that relationship that you find with a loved one is individual in itself and is pure in the way that it is constructed and found that story that you create between the two of you. And it's not much of a story if you are in a structure, per se. If it's forced, yeah, as you said. If it's forced in an environment where you feel restricted to not know what to say and to be on your best behavior because you're in front of your parents, you should be able to be open with someone when you're first meeting so that way you can create an open and honest and trustworthy relationship between you and that partner. Um, I would like to start off by saying I've had experience with, with my kawa and a'a. You know, I'll see how it, the was sito tahaya or with my kawa mai api. He came with his friends and um, it was a good experience. And I think it shows which goes back to show that that's our true roots and it makes us and it makes us um, you know um, carry on with um, the tradition of what makes us Tongan today and I don't think it's something forced, I think it's more like something showing your parents respect, showing your culture respect, and um, showing that you have morals for yourself. And that guy that comes to your house will understand and will know that he has, that we have morals for ourselves, and he'll respect that. Go ya bear mama. It's a very interesting um, question, because uh, nowadays, Faikawa uh, and Aha, it's not common. But the benefit of Faikawa and Aha is structured and it's discipline. It's a disciplined way of raising your kids. My point there's no freedom for the children. If you raise your children up and you trust them really well, raise them well with good morals, you allow them their freedom so they can, they can become independent. Not only are they becoming independent, they can make decisions for themselves. But not only that, the disadvantages. When they're not free, what do they do? They lie. They deceive. Parents sleeping, they climb outside the window. They sneak outside the door. They lie. Oh, I'm going to my cousin's house. We can all, you know, we're laughing because it's true. See, there's no freedom, but it's a structured way of living the Tongan life, which has no negative to it. But the benefit of what we stand with in our group is that raising your children really well with good morals, good values, being able to have their relationship, parent, child, enough for them to be free, you will never hesitate to let them go out for dinner, go out to watch movies. For me, um, personally, I just think, for one, it's a lot um, more safer. Being a youth myself, there's a lot of curiosity that comes with this age between um, 
14, 18, however you may put it. And if it was a perfect world, yeah, you can teach your child the best way possible, discipline them. But at the end of the day, we need to, we need to be realistic here. We're going through puberty, we're going through changes that we're not familiar with and we don't know how to, um, we don't know how to familiarize ourselves with it yet. So we're still learning. And um, I think it's great because there's no secrecy. Usually with secrecy, you're hiding something that you're not supposed to do. So when it comes to the ah uh -uh, if you really love that girl, you wouldn't be doing those. Come to the movies on Saturday, do time on and down. You go to her house, you knock on her door, you fell off with the parents, and that's showing respect, that's saying, I'm here for your daughter, I'm not here to play around, this and that. And at the same time, you're introducing yourself to the family, which, personally, my parents, I think they'll really appreciate that and respect that as um, real old school common parents. So just to end my point, it cancels out a lot of dangers that we can come with there as well, such as drinking, drug use. We're going through that curiosity stage. You want to try this, you want to try that. You know? And I think a lot of us can agree, but thank you.
and that by that both individuals acknowledge the significance of the pillars our tongue and customs hold, which include I'm not I'm not from I just say the English. Um I'm not from Abata. Um respect, humility and love. Thank you. Okay, and we're gonna time it one minute because you know time is very important. We don't want to be here all night, but um Malo Mahe 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 Nahi Koni um Mahoinga Alpito. Um so we're gonna move on to our next topic, which is parents should decide what career path their children should study towards. We have the team that agrees and the team that does not agree. I'll give you 30 seconds to discuss and get ready, and then we'll move on to Florian, our first speaker. This is a main point that my team and I have needed, as we do believe that an individual of Tongan descent has their own abilities, like everyone has taught to Taoluna or to Haka in front of everyone, those traditions, yes. However, when it comes to the workplace or career path that they want their child to thrive in, it's not only with church, it's not only through whatever they want them to study law or be a doctor, they could be so much more because they're talented in performing arts or they're talented when it comes to working with cars and etc. on that point. My team and I agree with the statement that says uh, parents should decide the future and career pathway for their children. Um, according to UOA and AUD, 90% of the success rate of students succeeding in their studies is attributed to the strong support of their families. This therefore emphasizes that by allowing the parents to choose the pathway, their children are more likely to succeed. Um, I would also like to rebut um, Jasmine Ritter, sorry, um, by saying that although individuality is important, um, the parent's decision is unbiased. Um, they are not influenced by peer pressure or, or whatever their friends are taking. So the decision they make is always for the best of their child. Thank you. Um, we are against this uh, question. Uh, and this point that I come with is that there are many careers out there for children to experience. Opportunities are endless everywhere. The downside of uh, parents choose Make a decision for a career path for their children. They make they waste time. For example, three years of a bachelor's degree to be a doctor, nurse. Oskoya, the child doesn't even want to practice there. Her passion is music. This is where I lead back to the last argument before. It's really important the relationship between parent and child. The role of a parent, from my point of view, is to support and encourage. It's not to decide and dictate. Okay, we're gonna move
Um, it increases their independency. That's one thing that I find, especially Tongan girls, we struggle with our independence. I think that a little bit of breathing room, I think letting us fail is good. Might, might not sound right up here, but letting your child go for things and learn, that's what you need, that's what they need. It increases their um, ability to get back up. And I think that um, letting, letting us decide, let us make our mistakes. And I think that that will prove that once we get on the track, we'll be fine. But I think we need to learn our own mistakes, increase our independency and our critical skill thinking. Thank you. Um, personally, I just think that your prince has been there since day one. Um, they've seen how you've progressed through life. How you've matured. Um, they they know you. They know you are, uh, and they can um, surely they can help you with their own experiences that they've had, with anything to do with any careers, music, um, a doctor's degree, counselling. I feel like their experience plus their their love for you, just being your parents. It's it's never gonna be. A bad decision from you. It's always going to be out of love and what's best for you. Go your bed, my love. I just want to quickly go on. Sorry. However, you said that you touched on the topic of um, parents have gone through things and they want to do better through their kids. And I think that's the life, life cycle, really, that whenever you become a parent, that you always want your kids to do better than what you did. That's the meaning of life, I feel, personally. So with that, wouldn't you trust your kids that I made this mistake and having, I'm gonna use a metaphor real quick. When you go bowling, um, you always put the skids up for kids, just so that way the ball doesn't go into uh, the ditch area, correct? However, when they reach a certain age, you're like, you know what, I trust you. You're gonna have fun and you can do it. And if they fail and they go, oh man. But once they hit the pin down at the end of the road, I did that. I did that with no barriers up, with nothing that, and no safety net. That feeling of independence, of accomplishment, especially accomplishment, is something that you can't just tell your child to have. It is an emotion, a feeling that is embedded into your body. And I feel deeply with this conversation that we're having that that is kind of taken away. When you do like say, this is the career path I have created for you, my child. Not to say don't take advice from your parents and respect them in every kind of way you can. You love them. But have that independence. Oh. to the audience too to decide what side they're on and the judges um, but we'll move on to our final topic which is the appropriate age to get married is 27 years of age 27 is the age you should get married yes or no <laughs> i know uh, and our, our parents generation uh, a lot of them got married earlier but i think we now live in a time where there are more career options for women as well, um, and so that will obviously have an impact on your guys' answers, all right? So um, I think we'll start with this side, on your thoughts. Should the appropriate age to get married be 27, yes or no? Um, so I'd like to rephrase the question. This is the appropriate, not compulsory, compulsory you don't have to, but appropriate. So my, my humble opinion, um, it is appropriate to get married at 27. You see, as I've touched on on the first topic, um, 27, what's that? Your past legalization, once you hit 18, you wanna, I wanna go to the clubs, I wanna do this, I wanna do that. And like, I feel like that only lasts for so long and you get, you get bored. So once you pass that age of 25, 26, 27, you're settled down. When people ask you, oh, we should do this, do I do this, do I? You're kind of like, I've been there, I've done that, I'm mature now. I've gone through that phase of my life already. 
um, I need to re-enter it because I've already experienced it. So I think, yes, those are the three privileges to get married. Thank you. Now, when you think about marriage, marriage is a sacred uh, commitment. And it's not only just the two couple that are married, it's a, bar uh, it's a commitment with God. It's not just signing the papers. So it's a big commitment, rather than just having a boyfriend and girlfriend. We are against um, this whole idea of marriage at the age of 27. Me, I'm 21 plus 8. But anyways, I've always got asked, why aren't you married yet? So I've always been the type of person that like, my parents mean the world to me. I'd rather be financially stable so that my parents don't struggle ever again before I get married, before I add a plus one to the family. Go ahead and bow. So by the age of 27, the question that we support, it reiterates that it is appropriate, meaning it is the most sensible, it is the most relevant, as by that age you would have gained, would have gained the maturity, the understanding, the sacrifice, all these things that you experience in life. By then, at that age, you understand that love is selfless, love is kind, love is pure, it, is, um, it means sacrifice and respect. And by the age of 27, that is when it is most um, relevant. Thank you. Malu, um, uh, in reference to the previous speaker, I'd actually like to use her argument for mine. The idea behind having a set age is, uh, there's no sense to it. I know a 27-year-old person who acts like they're 18. I know an 18-year-old person who has the wisdom and years of a 34-year-old. It's all up to the individual and putting a number on something 
thing makes absolutely zero sense. For instance, a woman's body clock. Uh, I know girls who want to be married very young because they want heaps of kids. If they have heaps of kids young, that means when they get into their 40s, 50s, they have young 20-year-old kids to look after them. I know some women, myself included, my finances, I'm thinking about what I have to provide for my family, what I have to give to my family. I'm not thinking about age. So, thank you. Okay, well, thank you so much for your beautiful thoughts. Um, once again, we'll leave it to the audience and the judges to think about where they sit with all these thoughts. Um, and that's the end of our second round. Um, I would just like to ask all the contestants to stand up and take a bow because it wasn't easy speaking like that in front of a crowd. And what was just in mind? Thank you guys so much. I'd like to hand it over back to our beautiful MC who will move on to the next part of the program. Marlo. Marlo, thank you so much. They're so brave, aren't they? Now we're going to get the band to give us another number. Awesome. Thank you so much.
Holo be o mau mea tai hopo ati ta opo tala ma fanga osi ai ya koi ki va ina ni pe koi kei o mui koi test of the senses. Ia tau fono nga hopo a ho tau fofo nga pe ko tau ma ta koi ta ta kia ki tau tolu i ho tau nga hi alu nga ka opo ma ho ina pe ke tau to e nga we a ki a ho tau nga hi o mo ke he. Pe i he fia fini just to break up a nga hi fanga ma to a to there was too they were too serious he ti pe hi ti ma nga hi me a koi ya. Pea koe kiva ina koe ni e hai hona o mata o fana fatapu Pea taki mai ki nga utolo ki heni Koe te epireni o muua Aia koe uraki te epireni He kai ki utalato hi moa Ai nga hi mea koe ni mou mea mai pe ki ai Se koni e tou noa Te nga u fiu, te nga u ala, ta nga u taila Koe ha ai mea o nga u nga u omo i Pe koe foi mereni Pe koe foi apere Ta mou mea mai pe ki nga hi koloa koe ni Se koni e tou noa, ta pau e tonu, ta atoa e mehanga o tala e to tonu, e hoko mai lewa ki he lewa o loua, koe tau mea kai whakatonga eni, e hiki hake ki hono ngutu kene ahi ahi, tapu kene sio ki ai, pea tene tala mai koe hae mea toko ni, pea koe lewa o lo tonu lewa, e mou tokwa kai pe ki ai nga mou tokwa ki fwe ke ini. Koe ai ka e kore ki he omo MC, E whakawhe i mai a e Uraki contestant i he e whiawhini Ko e Mr. Parfood and Thompson, Mr. Novesi tui pulotu E ne lava mai ki Stacey, mo pas pas i mai Tai me ni hi o kutonu ange tau fili i he mo ui I he kai ke ngawe aki ho tau mata E whai aki e tau ongo, mo e tau whakakau kau Pea mo e tau tui tupe ai, tupe ai Tau tari ki he taimi Koe ne pehe pe ka mata, pea ke ala lewa o fiul, pea ke lea tala mai koe hae hi ngoa, koe mea kute ala ki ai. Pas pas i mai. Pinata time. 
So does he only have one hit? Okay, don't hit it to the audience. Pudding, pudding. The last one is a drink. Step 
up to the first round. You have to feel and tell us what you think it is. Oh, not, not me. <laughs> what do you think this is? Describe it. Uh, that is bucket.
something, all right? But we'll look to C, and then we're going to blindfold you. That's your target, all right? Okay, I'll count you down, and you have three tries. So this is a test tester. Feel free to help her out. Three, two, one. Thank you. 
Thank you. 
Now, fair now, now, the late Haka, you fight you on the top, Palasia, Kina, Tolu, the Pangeko, a lot of Fesekau, the two were never to ask the Ungola, Kihe, Otua, Kenihama, Taki, Kina, Kina, Tolu. Yene Pehe, now Kay, for the Hoko Pier of Kama, Opo, and now, and now Nahi from Maka, a Avila, a Maika, Kiakina, Tolu, can now only be had now Kilea, a no no pe, go he go ha, and now see your kid, get to Unga Filmatu, and Tuma Filmuka, Taki. Yo <laughs> Okay, I want to speak in English because I want to speak to all of you. I want to thank all the contestants tonight. Beautiful young ladies, handsome young men. Um, it's not easy to put yourself forward um, like that. And I commend all of you. You did awesome in all the categories you could sing, you could speak about a topic, so passionate. I love the, pa the passion in all of you, all the topics you talked about. And um, I want to make a special mention to Claudine. Um, you smashed it. You, you're not even, you sang that song like <coughs> Tong and you pronounced the words great. I mean, we understand that you're half, you know, you're not full Tong. And I commend you. Um, also commend Uruaki. You're 15 years old. Oh my goodness. So many years from now. Um, and th these are the leaders of, um, of our country. And um, I commend all of you and I congratulate you. Marobi.
should be. Ma 
cui quel quattro cacatù al chita massivo e chita aida o vuoi anche morì e morì l'altro lui la cacatù ai ai fai cavengola ai mamma e me a ai fai apa apa ai tau in va da quello che sto fa fetta e la gente è qui Kau mau waktu ia, kau mau tala waktu ia. Tuh ke mau, lo to top atau to lah. To lebih beda. Kau pos kau ya, kau pos kah hiki ke otua, pos sia sia. Hanya kau mau lama ia. Hanya berhafal kau di foto kita. Kalau to atau to atau ini, kau mau lo to, kau mau lo tu, kau mau pos pos yang dek mau to lo to ini. Kau imagine kau ni dah. Kau jauh buat ini, kau hidup di dalam nabi, dia kau sihir dia kau doa, kau doa kau doa ni. Fasih tak? Kau sihir sihir yang kau ni, kau sama aku ok yang kau ni. Kau kau yang sama aku, kau maha pelika, kau maha siari dan kau doa lah kau doa. Oh kau mesti, oh seuluk kau lah, oh doa lah yang tahu, tahu begini. Tehang ay ko ay ko ay lea ay fafofonga o kita atol ng itama ako na pule ama popo pesente siya ni mga fulo ay taulong ko ay taupopo he ako pake he ay fahinga o hi ko ay ni ako ay ulungang ng fratonga kako ay uho ako ay mauwi apasya o tuwa si mauwi ay mahi ahon hakakayo tat hame api Kau buku aku, aku mau uji apa sih aku tua. Fakta itu lama lama tu hanya aku tua. Singa hema tu aku fanau, family peta, he awak mau aku tua, he tau lor tu. Tama itu aku mau fakta iya, aku mau fakta lor. Aku tua, nak tukuk dia aku mau fak. Aku mau kei fakta apa? Boy, don't be like that. 
Days and nights, you're all. 